Hey guys, it's Derek with Panhandle Exotics. On this episode, we're going to talk to you about African Crested Porcupines. Hang tight for just a second, I'm going to actually go grab one of ours we have available. So this is an African Crested Porcupine. They're one of the species that we work with as far as porcupines go. We typically work with one of three species. Uh, we do the prehensile tail porcupines or the tree porcupines as they're known. Uh, those guys are from South America. We also do the North American like we would have here in the US. And then we do these guys which come from Africa and Italy. Um, these guys are actually going to be the largest species of porcupine. They're the third largest species of rodent in the entire world as well. Um, they can make a great pet. The biggest thing, you just have to get them when they're young like this so you can work with them, hand feed them, and let them get to know you and bond with you. If you do that, they actually have a really good disposition and a great temperament. These guys are full of personality once they get to know you as well. There's also some tricks you can do to help with bonding. Um, you can take an old t-shirt or something that has your scent on it, throw it in their enclosure, and then that's going to help them bond with you because it helps them learn your scent, which is, is part of the bonding experience. But once they bond with you, it is for life. Um, these guys do have a pretty good lifespan as well. Uh, in captivity or the wild, either one is actually up to 20 years. Um, so they're definitely going to be a long-term commitment on these guys, but they're worth every bit of it. They are actually a lot of fun. Um, one cool thing about these guys is if it's in a group, they're called the prickle. Um, so that's just kind of like a little fun fact for you. Um, one thing people ask us all the time is, are they going to shoot their quills? The answer is no. They're not able to shoot quills. No clue how that myth got started. It is absolutely not true. Um, they can release their quills. So if they poke into something, they can drop their quills so it'll stay in them. But they absolutely cannot shoot them. I mean, you see I'm holding it. It's not shooting its quills out. They're not uh, falling off or anything like that. Now they can shed their quills. They do shed them. They'll actually regrow in, the, in that one's place whenever they uh, shed them as well. Um, their quills are also actually used for a lot of things too. Some like the Chinese medicine and that sort of thing will use them. People use them for like jewelry or uh, decorations, um, home decor, things like that. Um, but uh, they will regrow them. Their quills are actually actually going to get 12 to 13 inches long uh, when they're full grown as well. Um, these guys are typically monogamous, so when they mate, they'll mate for life. They'll pair up, and then that's going to be who they're going to stay with for the rest of their of their life. Um, also, in the wild, porcupines can kill lions, they can kill leopards, hyenas, things like that. So, needless to say, if you can kill a lion or something like that, you've got to be a little cautious of them. I mean, you don't need to be scared by any means, but you just need to know what you're doing, which we are here to help with that and help teach. What they'll do in the wild is when they go to sleep, like in a den, they're going to sleep with their butt to the back side of the opening, and they're going to have their whole little skirt of quills open, so that way if a lion or something, some kind of predator comes up to them, all they have to do is open that up and they have a defense. And if that goes through the lion's face, that animal's dead. So it's a really, really good protection for these guys. But as far as with people, it's all on how you raise them. Um, they're typically not going to be aggressive towards people as long as you get them while they're young and you work with them a lot and let them bond with you and go through that bonding process. Um, when you take them home, the best method of raising these guys, uh, you're going to keep them in your house for several months, let them get to know you that way. Um, honestly, when you're not uh, observing them, like when you're not there playing with them, you'll put them in like a pet crate or something, just like you would create a, a new puppy. Because um, they are a rodent, obviously, so you don't want them to chew up your baseboards, your sheetrock, that sort of thing. Um, but when you're there watching, they can play as much as they want. When they get bigger, they are going to need to go outside. Uh, they will need an outdoor enclosure. Uh, typically like 15 by 20 is or, or larger is going to be good for these guys. They're great diggers so you're going to have to have either like a wire floor or a uh, solid concrete bottom like a concrete pad for them to help keep them from digging out. Um, like a tree trunk or something like that like an old tree cut down and put in there is great for them. Um, it's actually a form of enrichment. It'll give them something to do. It gives them something to chew on which uh, they have the continuous growing teeth, so that's going to help keep that nod down so they don't have issues because of that. Um, and then some sort of a den. Uh, again, with the mean chewers, you don't want to do a den out of like 
plywood or something like that because it's just not going to last your best thing to do is uh build it out of cinder blocks or something like that so it's going to last them quite some time but um the biggest thing on these guys you have to get them while they're young if you get one as an adult it's not going to bond with you it's not going to be a pet but if you get one of these little guys while they're a baby they can actually be really really cool they're going to be a very fun little pet as long as you take the proper care the biggest thing on these guys even while they're um like when they're bonded to you and really social uh the biggest thing you have to worry about is if like a dog barks or a kid screams or something they're not going to try to hurt you on purpose but they get spooked if they get spooked and they open up their little scared of quills it can still end up hurting you even though it was an accident so they can be a little skittish because of that you just have to use a little bit of extra caution but these guys are pretty amazing animals um in florida they do require a class three permit the, the permit is a free permit um once you reserve your pet will actually help you with that permit process um the biggest thing is you've got to be able to pass a background check as long as you pass a background check then you'll be good on that it's it's pretty simple and we'll help you get that set up as well. Um, if you have any questions on these guys, come by the store or give us a call. Uh, we're here, we're happy to help. And I hope this was educational for you. And we'll see you guys soon. Uh, be sure to click the button below to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we'll talk to you guys soon.